Imagine you are watching a movie on a streaming service. The system remembers exactly where you paused the movie, your preferences and other settings. However, all of this information is saved to the specific device or app you are using to watch the movie. If you switch to another device, like from your TV to your phone, that new device wouldn't know where you left off. You would have to manually find the point in the movie and reconfigure your preferences because all that information was stored only on the first device. This is similar to stateful architecture. The system keeps track of your session, such as your movie progress and settings, but this session is tied to the specific device or server you are using. If something happens to that device or server, you lose your session and the new one won't know your progress. Now, think about how modern streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime videos work. You can start watching a movie on your TV, pause it and then later pick up right where you left off on your phone, laptop or any other device. The system doesn't rely on the specific device to store your progress. Instead, it sends your watch history and preferences to a central server that any device can access. This is stateless architecture. Every request you make, like playing, pausing or switching devices, contains all the information the system needs to know, such as your account, movie progress, preferences and so on and so forth. The system retrieves this from a shared database so any device can continue where the last one left off without needing to remember anything from the previous session. Now, let's look into another more common practical example, online shopping carts. In a stateful system, when you add items to your cart, the server you are connected to stores this information. If you return later or your session is redirected to a different server due to load balancing, you might find your cart empty because the new server doesn't have your cart data. This inconsistency can lead to a poor user experience and potentially lost sales. In a stateless system, your cart items are stored in a shared database. No matter which server handles your request, whether you are browsing from your phone, tablet or computer, your cart remains consistent. This reliability enhances user satisfaction and encourages customers to complete their purchases. Another example is authentication. In a stateful authentication system, once you log in, the server keeps track of your authenticated session. And if the server fails or you connect to a different server, you might be logged out unexpectedly because the new server doesn't recognize your session. Whereas in a stateless authentication system, Authentication tokens like JWTs or JSON Web Tokens are used. These tokens contain all the necessary information and are sent with each request. Any server can verify the token and grant access without needing to store session data locally. The main advantages of stateless architecture is that since no session data is stored on individual server, you can easily add more servers to handle increased traffic. Load balancers can distribute requests without worrying about session affinity that is keeping a user tied to the same server. And if a server goes down, it doesn't impact user sessions because no critical session data is lost. Other servers can seamlessly continue handling requests. Stateless systems are generally easier to maintain. There is no need to synchronize session data between servers or manage complex state replication. Developers can deploy updates or make changes to servers without affecting user sessions, enabling continuous deployment practices. Whereas on the other hand, in a stateful architecture, adding more servers require ensuring that users consistently stay connected to the same server or that the session data is shared across servers, which can be complex and resource intensive. And if the server storing session data fails, users may lose their sessions, leading to data loss and negative user experience. Furthermore, in a stateful architecture, managing session data across multiple servers requires additional infrastructure, such as a session storage solution or server clustering. Stateless architecture is being heavily used in many modern real world applications. Services like Twitter and Instagram use stateless architecture to handle millions of users simultaneously. By storing user data in a centralized databases and using tokens for authentication, they ensure that users have a consistent experience no matter which server process they request. Modern applications often use microservices, where functionalities are broken down into small, independent services. Statelessness is crucial here because it allows each microservice to scale independently and communicate effectively without relying on shared state. Content delivery network or CDN serve content from servers distributed around the globe. They use stateless protocols to deliver content quickly and reliably, regardless of the user's location or which server responds to the request. For applications that anticipate growth, high traffic or require high availability, adopting a stateless architecture is generally the preferred approach. It allows for seamless scaling, easier maintenance and a more robust user experience. So if you are interested in implementing stateless architecture or transitioning from a stateful system, consider exploring the following topics on which I have previously made a series of videos. Here you will learn how to use JWTs to authenticate users 
without storing session data on the server. You will understand how databases and caching solutions like Redis can store session-related data efficiently. You should also study how stateless principles are applied in RESTful web services and see how stateless microservices interact in a distributed system. By grasping the differences between stateful and stateless architectures, you can design systems that are more robust, scalable, and suited to the needs of modern applications.